is hope you're having a good day to let the word be spoken here again i hope you guys enjoyed that song i did lost i'll get into a little bit of it at the end of this video but i want this video to be very short this video that we have here is seven minutes by john MacArthur. i found it while i was watching youtube on my tv uh, i don't know why i had to say tv there i guess i just wanted to fit that in but this video it says it's a, it's titled john MacArthur. how do i know if i'm really saved now if you guys watch my videos you know that we believe in the death burial and resurrection of jesus christ once we believe that we're saved now as christians and as people who aren't even christians we are all forgiven because remember jesus died for us all and he has forgiven us of all trespasses, Colossians 2 verse 13. Anyway, so watch this. Watch this video with me. And I want us to understand this. And again, when I said about the forgiveness part, I'm going to get into that at the end of the video. But I want you all to know that we are all forgiven. Not when we believe, but we were all forgiven before. Because remember, Jesus shed his blood before we were born. He did the work before we were born, before we were around. The Bible says without the shedding of blood, there's nothing given to sin. It's not about how many words we profess or, you know, it's not about words. It's about the blood. His blood forgave everybody in the entire world. Everybody's been forgiven. But anyway, let's watch this John MacArthur video. And let's see what John MacArthur has to say about how do you know if you're truly saved? As a lot of people say, how do you know if you're really saved? Again, us, we know that you're not saved by your works. That no works can save you. That if you decide to just believe, that's all you need to do. Guys, let's watch this video together. And we'll see what John MacArthur, the biggest pastor in the world. One of the biggest pastors. Paul Walsh is there with him and John Piper. Pastor John, my question for you is, how can someone, how can I have assurance, is how can someone, how can I have assurance of my salvation? I think it's so important because so much of our growth in Christ biblically is rooted in a confidence that we have been saved. And for many people, right. they don't know if they've actually been saved. They think they have, but they don't remember a specific date or then there was a season of sin. And so it's hard for them to move forward. Uh, with confidence that they have been saved and therefore they are dead to sin. So help us out. How can we have assurance that we are saved? Well, you can eliminate one thing for certain that can take your assurance, and that is the idea that you could lose your salvation. That That's a lie. Salvation is forever. Salvation is eternal. He is right. Salvation is eternal. It's forever. You can't lose it. But how can someone even have salvation if they're not saved because they haven't believed in Jesus. Now, keep that in mind. Okay? You can have your theology right. You can have your Bible book right. But if you don't have your play, your faith in the right place, then there's no point. That's a sad thing I had to realize. You can have the works. You can go to church. You can read your Bible all day. You can have a three-hour prayer session because a lot of them say you you have to go deeper into prayer and deeper into God, closer to God, which is false. Because if Christ is in you, how else you 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 like God's in you? How else can like this doesn't make sense? But anyway, let's carry on. There's nothing that can separate you from the love of Christ. Jesus said in John six, "All that the Father gives to me will come to me, and I will lose none of them, but raise them at the last day." Salvation is forever. So if you are saved, it's forever. That faith cannot fail because that faith is not your faith. That's a gift of God who's given it to you, Ephesians 2. So you eliminate that if you get your theology right, that salvation is forever. So all you want to know is, is my salvation forever? And here's how you know. Watch this now. There is big, there is subtlety. I say irony because it's big subtlety. It's very there. So... At the six minute mark is where we want to get to, but let's listen to how you can know you're saved. Now, there is one way to be saved. And if there's one way to be saved, there would only be one way to know 
how you're saved and know if you've been saved. If there's one way in the door and I get into that door, but I'm not sure I'm in the door, I'll have to remember how I got in the door. I opened it. But if someone says to me, no, you got into the door by coming through the window. What? No, I, I came through the door. If there's one way, there's one thought process for this. But as we'll see with the subtlety of Calvinists and not all Calvinists, but of some of these Calvinists and some of these people, salvation is not by faith alone. And even if they say it's faith alone, if you want to know you're saved, it's everything other to do than faith. So if you want to know how to get into the door, it's everything other than how you got into the door. It is subtlety and lies. Let's continue watching. I think there are three tests and then a fourth comment. Test number one is, what do you love? What do you love? If any man is in Christ, he's a new creation. Old things pass away, new things come. What, what are these new things? I, I like to think of them as new affections. So the first mark of a believer is not perfect love, but it's evident love. What, what do you love? You love the Lord. You love his word. You know, you don't love him like you should. It needs to be increased. You don't love the word like you should, but you love those things. You love the people of God. You want to be with his people. You want to be in the church. You want to be a part of a worshiping group. So love is the first evidence of a transformed heart. The second one is humility. There's a sense in which you are aware of your sinfulness and you never really get over this incredible grace that's been given to you to save you. The third one is obedience. It's not perfect obedience, but it's a longing in your heart to obey the Lord. You do acknowledge him as Lord you want to obey. So love, humility, and obedience. And then the fourth thing is this. The single most uh, validating reality in life for your faith is not some idea in your head, it's trials. It's what can your faith survive? You know, people who say, well, I believe in the Lord and something goes wrong in their life and they walk out. Oh, that's not a saving faith. That's not a faith that's a gift from God because that lasts. So you take Job as an illustration. Devastation. I mean, just devastation every way you could cut it. And he says, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. So when you go through a trial, maybe your mom is, is, gets cancer or maybe your dad dies or maybe some horrible thing happens or maybe you're invested in a relationship and, you know, the, the person you're interested in walks away from you or whatever the issue is, maybe you get an illness. Does your faith stay intact through that trial? That's what Peter's talking about when he says it's those kinds of trials that validate your faith. And so... I have to say this in all honesty, if you're 15 years old, you might question your faith more than you do than you would if you were my age, because I've, I've been through that. I've been through a wife that broke her neck and broke C3 and C2, it just gets stronger all the time. So I say, this isn't my faith. This is, this is a faith that stands the test. This is, I mean, the devil said, Job, Job just trusts you, God, because you, you bless him. So God says, okay, take it all away. Take it all away. And we'll test his faith. And it was all taken away, all of it. And he said, even if you slay me, I'll trust you. That is that is a gift of God. That's a faith that comes from above. So as you grow as a Christian, as you have more experiences that challenge your faith, if you come out the other side trusting the Lord, still loving him, still humble, still desiring to be obedient, those are the acid tests. You said a, a love... Yeah, so there we go. Loving, obedience, enduring to the end type of faith. <clears throat> I know that's in Matthew, but you know this is following a similar pattern of a faith that continues and doesn't shipwreck and leave Christ. Uh, but Timothy says, even if we believe, though we believe not, he abideth faithful, he for he cannot deny himself. So even if you were to stop believing, you know Christ can't deny himself. So. I mean, unfortunately, it'll be unfortunate for brother or sister to lose Christ. It'll be unfortunate to lose a brother and sister. Um, but that doesn't mean I won't see them in heaven because they, if they have believed in Jesus, they have will not lose their salvation, and they haven't lost it. They just decided to walk away, which would be unfortunate. But hey, you know, people go through many trials in life, and you know what? 
to be honest, I see why a lot of people leave. I mean, you got all this teaching out here where you have to focus on your obedience, your church attendance, how well you love God, how well you read your Bible, how many times you pray. And this burden is too much for people. And to be honest, I see, I know why they would leave. If people, some, if someone told me that salvation is a free gift, but then five minutes later, Hey, hey, Brendan, I know you just believe in Jesus, but are you reading your Bible? Uh, where do I start? Okay, you got to start uh, You gotta start there. Hey, Brendan, are you reading your Bible twice a day now? Uh, no. Okay, <laughs> but get reading, buddy. Hey, you going to church? Uh, no, not yet. I haven't found one. Okay, be careful now. You know, salvation is a free gift, but, you know, God wants you to go to church. If you don't go to church... uh. I have to question your salvation. But but you told me I, I just got to believe. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I mean, it's free, but you see, it's double talk and it makes people tired. And people on this channel, we're tired of the lies. We're tired of hearing it's a free gift, but out of, but out of someone else's mouth, it works. Things that are different are not the same. Let's remember that. For Jesus Christ or who do you love and what do you love? Because we're new creations, a humility that comes from what Christ has done for us in the gospel. And then you mentioned obedience and trials. I have one final question for you regarding obedience. Because I think that now this guy seems like he's asking a genuine question. I don't know how many people know about the false teachings of John MacArthur, Paul Washer, John Piper, like the irresistible grace theory or the tulip theology. You know, for me, I didn't think they were that bad. I didn't even think it you know there were times where i would say to myself last year in my early christian whatever that phase was like i would say to myself this doesn't feel free this really doesn't feel like a free gift but i still went with the flow because why again guys i want to point this out i haven't ever said this before my plan was never to be a christian my plan was never to come into this life so when I started hearing these men teach, I thought it was from God. Because again, I wasn't I didn't grow up Christian. I didn't grow up with the Bible every day or at all. I guess I went to church, but that doesn't mean squat, because <laughs> there are people sitting in church today who still don't know what salvation is, who are 40 years old. So again, my plan was never to come into this. So, you know, this is when when I heard them teach, it was just new to me. So if you had to send me this video today, 2021, while I still had the old mindset I did last year, I would say thank you for this video. Yeah, man, we should love God more. And if we don't, we got to be careful of our salvation. I would say that. I would say that exact thing. And I bet you I wouldn't even doubt what I just said. But here's a man who's asking a genuine question, right, about obedience. And this video has over 50,000 views. I can see it right now on my TV. What about the people there who haven't believed? And like I said in the beginning, remember, you could have your theology right. You can know that salvation is forever and you can't lose it. You can know all the Bible books and you can have all the commentaries and you can have all the teachings in the world. But if your faith is misplaced, what's the point? You can have the works. You can go to the church. You can be the pastor. But if your faith is in a sinner, if your faith is in yourself, then you don't have salvation. And that's the sad, I don't know, I don't want to say scary, I don't want to scare anyone, but that is the, the, the unfortunate sad truth. That our faith can be placed in works, in religion, in how much we're sinning. I mean... Colossians, Christ forgave me of my sins. I don't have any sins left. God took away my sins. It says somewhere in Corinthians. <sighs> Nailing it to the cross. Yes, he nailed, he nailed it to the cross. Um, Colossians 2 verse 13 and 14. Anyway, let's carry on, man. It's just, you know, this is like a me. This is, this is me in 2020 asking John MacArthur this answer. I know the answer to what salvation is now. Look, I have been confused a little. There are days where I wasn't sure. 
But now that I know, let's see what John has to say. Thought in many people's mind might be, well, I want to obey Jesus Christ, but as I look at my past and have I, even have a, as I consider the previous year, I see so much disobedience and I struggle with sin. How do I know if I'm obedient enough to evidence a love for Jesus Christ? What would you say? Now watch this. This is the subtlety now. I'm going to have to draw back to what he said earlier, but look at this. This guy asked a genuine question. I don't think he knows that salvation is a free gift. Maybe he does. I don't know. Maybe this guy asking John these questions. Maybe he knows. I don't know. Anyway. Um, he's asking a genuine question about obedience. Because there are a lot of people in this world who struggle to obey. Obey their parents. Obey teachers like me. I wasn't always great in school. And when it comes to God. When you have the flesh on your side. When you are... When you have the flesh, it's, it's even harder. So, of course, when you're faced with your salvation, and if you if and if salvation is about how many times you obey the flesh, yeah, you're going to be up a creek. It's not going to be a good day. So, of course, this guy's asking, uh, you know, genuine answers. He wants a genuine response. There are 50,000 people who have watched this video who want to know, how do I know if I'm really saved? Now... This guy is asking the question about obedience. And there are genuine people who are asking the same question. Let's see what John says. Well, you're not trying to earn your salvation. You already have it. Mm -hmm. So it's not your, your obedience so you earn salvation. Paul the Apostle says... So you're saying it's not your obedience that earns salvation. But that is subtlety. I think there's a subtle line there. Because if obedience was not an assurance... Because this video is basically an assurance of salvation. He's saying in this video that there is a wanting of obedience and there is some form of obedience. And if there's not a perfect obedience, there is a longing to be more obedient or to be obedient to the Lord. So salvation in John MacArthur's, uh, through John, what John MacArthur said, there is some form of obedience that you have to have. And if you're not obedient, you may not be saved. Now, is salvation based on how we obey, how we walk the Christian life? No, that's different. That's service. Service and salvation are different things. And people are different walks in their Christian life. I know I'm not where I want to be. Not like I'm trusting in my flesh to get there. But I know that there are things in my life that I got to say, hey, I don't think this is good. And I'm sure we all have our own different walks in our Christian life. We are not where our other brothers and sisters are in Christ. There's a brother in Christ who can read the Bible for an hour straight. And there is another brother in Christ who only reads the Bible for five minutes. There's a sister in Christ who has a Bible that looks like it's brand new and it's been there for five years. And there's a sister in Christ who has a Bible that has so many notes in there, you wouldn't know if it was a textbook. <laughs> We are, all, we are all at different walks in our lives with the Lord. But if you're saying salvation, he's in a way saying salvation has obedience. That's subtlety. Because this video is, how do I know I'm really saved? So, if you watch this video, if you watch it, you're going to have to look at if you're obedient, if you love. Look at the subtlety. It's subtle lies. It's subtle deception. And even if John MacArthur doesn't mean to say that, maybe he doesn't. I'm not going to put words in his mouth. But there's clearly a contradiction because we're not say by obedience. That's what he's saying. Because he's saying you can't earn your way. But if you are saved, there will be obedience. You see the subtlety? It's kind of like the faith that has works thing. Now, as people who rightly divide the word of God, we know that James 2 is not to us. It's not to the body of Christ. But, again, I digress. Oh, wretched man that I am. He says, I do what I don't want to do. I don't do what I want to do. And this is a mature believer in Romans 7. And he's saying, I am the chief of sinners. So you're never going to be at a point where you're not going to have sin. That's part of what humbles you, right? 
that's part of what humbles you. So if you're looking for perfection in your life, you're never going to find it. So I like to think of it as direction, not perfection. What's the trajectory of your life? Is yeah, it toward Christ? Yeah, it is. Is it toward Christ? Is it toward loving? Um, should we grow in love? Sure. To be saved? No. Should we love our brothers and sisters in Christ? Yes. Should we grow in that? Yes. To be saved? No. Should we, you know, see if there's sin that maybe we could say, I don't think this is good. Maybe, yeah, sure. There's not a problem with that. Sin isn't good. I'm not going to disagree. But do we have to stop sinning to be saved? Do we have to turn from sin to be saved? No. No. Not at all. That's a work. Turning from sins to be saved is a work. Is it toward an honest evaluation of your own sinfulness that causes you to be humble is it in the direction of desiring to be obedient i don't i don't obey there are brothers and sisters in christ who struggle with pride they're gonna have a hard time watching this video if their salvation is about them being humble now do i think there are a lot of people who are self-righteous who believe that they're worthy of heaven do they need to be humbled sure do i need to be humbled sure did i need to be humbled yes I thought salvation was works. Now, I wasn't out there saying, you got to work your way to heaven. But because I was listening to these preachers, I believed that same thing. So I also needed to be humbled. So I think maybe there are a lot of people who need humble back. Okay? I'm going to be honest. I needed it. But to be saved, you need to believe in Jesus Christ. If you're self-righteous and you don't think Jesus is enough, yeah, there's a lot of humbling. But that humble person, even if he, did, if he even if he's still prideful, what does he need to do to be saved? Believe in Jesus Christ. Then he all he's got to work on is his pridefulness. The Lord, perfectly. That's why I need to be saved with an eternal salvation. Because I, another way to say it would be this, Johnny. If I could lose my salvation, I would. Right? If I could, I would. Because I don't have the power to hold it. Because John's basically saying that that's why, because, you know, people struggle with pride and, you know, all of this stuff. He That's why people need to be saved with an eternal salvation. Because if salvation was temporary and if it was about us, even though this video clearly makes it about us, then we would lose our salvation. And that's what he says. And I do agree with that. If salvation is about us, we're losing it every day. We're waking up and gaining it. <laughs> We're going to sleep and losing it. <laughs> We're waking up and gaining it. 12 in the afternoon, we lost it. 3 p.m., we're asking God to forgive us, and he's going to give it back to us. And you don't ask God for forgiveness because he's already forgiven us. But um, And he already forgave us all 2,000 years ago. But anyway, um, you know, we'll just be, a, we'll be up a creek. <laughs> so I do agree. But at the same time, you can agree on this. And still not have faith in the right place. That's why the Bible tells us we don't have to hold on to our salvation. God holds on to us. And he holds on to us by giving us a faith that will not fail. So good. So as new creatures, we need to evaluate what and who do we love. There's a humility that accompanies those who are truly saved. They're broken over their sin and they're grateful for what right. Jesus has done. There's a desire to be obedient. And then there's the test of trials. Do we come out of the difficulties in our life with stronger faith or do we, as you say, walk away from Jesus? So here it is, there's brokenness of your sin. I've heard that many times. You know, Paul Washer's even said, you know, true believers, they're broken over their sin. They don't want to continue in sin. Um, I'm going to be honest with y'all, you know, sin isn't good. Um, I won't lie. There are a lot of things in my life where I have to say, you know, I need to change my mind about them. I'm not going to lie to you. You know, I'm not going to sit here and act like I got rid of all my sin. You know, and we won't in these fleshy bodies. There's always going to be something we got to deal with. But, you know, this broken mentality over sin, it's, I don't know, man. It's, I don't know. You know, there's just so many Christian words and so many things. You know, this is why I'm taking a break from YouTube because there's been so much stuff I've been learning. And I've had to unlearn. And it's just got me feeling like, man, why didn't I believe all of these lies? Let's continue. That's why you count it all joy when you 
fall to various trials because the testing of your faith is what validates it. Yeah, well, I love it. No, thank you so much, Pastor John. Look, that was, um, well, that was Pastor John MacArthur's video. I mean, guys, you know, I don't know what to say. You know, let's just go over what we heard. You gotta love. You know, the, the assurance steps is love, obedience. So who do you love? Do you love the church? Do you love going to church? Do you love God? Do you love your brethren? How long can your faith withstand? Like, is your faith going to last forever? Are you obedient? And there's another one I just can't remember right now. Maybe you can put it in the comments. Ah, but again, guys, you know, salvation. Oh, and then the last one is humbleness. You got to be humble. It is good to be humble, but not to be, you don't be humbled. You don't humble. You don't, you, you, you don't become less, you don't become humble to be saved. Again, if you're, if you, if you're self-righteous and you believe that salvation is works like I did, then sure, we all need a little bit of humble pot. But after we understand that Jesus, it's only Jesus that can save us. That doesn't mean I'm, so what I'm saying is, as soon as I come off my pedestal, my, 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 fairy, my, fairy, my pharisaical pe pedestal and my self-righteous pedestal, I'm not saved yet until I believe that Christ died for my sins according to the scriptures, was buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. So somebody can become prideful before they saved, and then after they believe in Jesus Christ, they are saved, but then they still struggle with it. So I don't know. So these four tests is what someone should be looking at to see if they're saved. I find it funny, not surprised, but after watching this whole video, there has been nothing. There was not a single word about Jesus Christ dying for our sins, being buried and raising again on the third day and having to believe that. Now, this is to say, how do I know if I'm truly saved? Remember when I said in the beginning with the door? If you got in the door one way, you're going to remember how you got into the house or wherever you are. If there is one way, there has to be one answer. If I got in through the door and then someone tells me how I got in the house, I got in through the window. What? Shraggy? Hmm? <laughs> that don't make sense. Guys. Listen, salvation is a free gift. Salvation is not of works. It is not of yourself. There's only one way to be saved today in this dispensation, and that is by faith. You have to believe in Jesus Christ. You have to believe that he died for your sins, was buried, and was going to third day. No amount of church. You can go to church all day. You can read your Bible all day. You can pray all day. There's not a problem doing any of those things. If church is good, if your church is good, then I'll go. If it's not a good church, I don't know. I would try to find a good one that preaches the gospel, which is 1 Corinthians 15, verse 3 and 4, more sp uh, which is verse 1 through 4, more specifically verse 3 and 4. Other than that, <sighs> there were 50,000 of me recording this video, there were 50,051 people who just heard that they do not need to look at Jesus Christ. Now, I know you didn't say don't trust in Jesus Christ. You never said any of that. But they just watched a video where there was no conversation of Jesus Christ dying for their sins, being buried and rising, rising again. There was no conversation about salvation being a free gift. And that you're saved when you hear the gospel and believe it. Ephesians 1 verse 13. There was none of that. All I heard was a bunch of rules. Not rules, sorry. A bunch of checklists that have nothing to do with the gospel. What is the gospel? 1 Corinthians 15 verse 3 and 4. Well, more specifically verse 3 and 4. So, I don't know what to say. My last comments are this. 
there is subtle deception in this video. If you did watch this video and you're watching this video, my video right now, please, I want you to know that salvation is free. You do not and should not look at yourself to check if you're saved. Do not look at a sinner to see if a sinner is saved by themselves. Trust in the Savior. If you've not heard the gospel, I'm going to tell you now. There's only one way you can be saved today in this dispensation, and that is by faith. Ephesians 1 verse 13 says, In whom ye also trusted, after that you heard the word of truth. What is the word of truth? The gospel of your salvation. In whom also after that ye were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. You believed, you were sealed, you were saved, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. If you have the Holy Spirit, you're saved. So it's when you hear the gospel and believe it. But what is the gospel? Here we are in 1 Corinthians 15 verse 1 to 4. More specifically, which I've highlighted, verse 3 and 4. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also you have received and wherein you stand, by which also ye are saved. If you keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. Here it is, the gospel. For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received. Here it is. How that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. That is the gospel. If you believe this, that Jesus Christ died for your sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures, you're saved. You can now rejoice. In what the Lord Jesus Christ has done for you. Salvation is free. Not of works. Lest any man should boast. And where is boasting if it's not about you and it's all about Jesus Christ? Let us boast in Jesus Christ, brothers and sisters. And not our works or our own obedience. Because we know the flesh. The flesh is the flesh. Come on now. Come on now. All glory to Jesus and not to self. Thank you for watching this long video. I hope you have a good day. This has been me. Let the word be spoken. I'm out. Have a good day.